Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to episode 5 of Kid Cosmic. Uh, last time we had uh, medals. Lots of medals being given out. Rosa is the MVP of the group. I, I, I kind of like that too. I, I don't remember if I mentioned this last time, so let me say that real quick. I like that Rosa, of all characters, is the MVP. The youngest of them, this four-year-old girl who barely understands anything and because of her what her power ring gives her with the ability to you know become giant which also gives her a certain level of strength and vulnerability it makes her just exceptionally useful and as long as they can keep her under control and everything she's able to take down pretty much any enemy they've come across and is proving to be an invaluable member of the team you have kid who can fly you have joe who has her um portals um they, they their powers are useful but they haven't really gotten them down they're starting to and like even joe and pa uh, papa g even they got their medals and everything. The only one who didn't at first was Kid. Until, you know, they had to fake it. Uh, but... I like that of all of them, it's the four-year-old... Who is the one, like, proving to be the most useful member of the group. I just think that's funny. I, I think that's a really funny, entertaining idea. Um... Now, I, I, I want to briefly talk about, because I don't think I've really given my full thoughts on this uh, yet, but we've seen four episodes now, and it's it's started to build up our crew, right? So let me give a little bit of an overthoughts here on each member of the crew and what I think of them so far in this series. Uh, kid is a kid, and I mean that in the best way possible. He feels exactly like a kid of his age in terms of how he acts, how he thinks. Everything about him feels so genuine. Um, speaking as someone who was a kid at one point. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I couldn't even keep a straight face saying that. Because um, everyone was a kid, obviously. <laughs> Unless you're a robot or something. Um... But, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of kids' personality is how I acted. The jealousy and everything when everyone else is getting stuff and he's not. The impatience with his powers and the dedication to keeping this idea of them teaming up to be heroes and everything going. It, everything, he feels like a true kid. In so many shows that you watch, child characters are often either too smart or just don't act like kids. They act too mature. Uh, and sometimes that can work, especially for comedic series. Like, you watch The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Mandy acts like an adult. She talks like an adult, she acts like an adult. And Billy is too stupid, like... Billy's just comedically stupid. But for the sake of that series, it works. Because the fact that they are on complete opposite ends balances them out. And it leads to some really comedic moments. So, in a series like that, it works. But it's also, go it's also really good to sometimes show a uh, series where the kids just act like regular fucking kids. And you just don't see it often enough, honestly. So wh whenever I do see it, it's just it, it's it's almost exciting to me, because it's just something it's like that I just want to see, you know. 
And it's not just Kid, of course. Uh, Rosa, let's talk about her next and my thoughts on her. Rosa feels like a four-year-old. She feels insanely accurate. Having grown up with two younger siblings and having um, babysat and worked for uh, church daycare stuff and all, I've been around four-year-olds. <laughs> I know how they act, and this is very fucking accurate. <laughs> like, she just f feels like a kid, like a little kid who's having fun. And that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, I really like both Kid and her for just the way that they feel so accurately and genuinely like children. Uh, Joe is definitely my kind of character. Like, you, if you saw my Big City Green reactions so far, which, again, I've stated before, but I am going to be getting back to that, um... You know I like Gloria in that. You know she's my favorite character in Big City Greens. And Joe definitely reminds me of Gloria. Very much so. Um, and that's a very good thing because that's my kind of character. Like, there's a lot of different character archetypes I like. But I kind of like the uh, th this kind of character. The, the sassy... Uh, work age uh teenage character or well actually in big city greens uh glory as an adult but still um who is kind of sick of of a lot of the world and a lot of things but has a soft spot in there and a heart of gold and you know likes to feel appreciated as well it's like they're just very similar in their tone and style and how they're presented. Uh, Papa G is probably the weakest of the group for me. Um, he's a little too accepting of things. Like, he, he's way... Like, he's he's supposed to be Kid's guardian, right? It, it It's kind of been unclear, like, his relation to Kid. Um... Because his name is Papa G. But I, he's clearly not Kid's father. And I don't think he's his grandfather either. I mean, it's possible he could be like a great uncle. But there's not really any evidence to support that either. So I, I just kind of refer to him as Kid's guardian. Um, and, and as his guardian, he's not really the best influence like, the dude, it's like, anytime Kid does or says anything, like, Papa G's just like, okay, I'm in. It's like, wh what? <laughs> no. Like, that's that's dangerous. That's not okay. <laughs> he's too... He's too much of a yes man, I guess you could say. He just doesn't know how to say no or, you know, like... Stand up to Kid's childishness. He doesn't know how to, you know, be tough when he needs to be. And I'm not saying, like, abusive or anything. No, fuck no. But he's a little too accepting. It's it's just, it's way too easy to get him on your side. And he's just, he needs to be dialed down just a little bit for me. And he's not bad. It's just, he's a little too accepting a little too high energy a little too goofy for my tastes um tuna sandwich not much to say tuna sandwich is a cat <laughs> so not really anything to say there there's some good jokes that they do with tuna sandwich but it's still a cat like the character is not really a character per se so there's not really much to say on that and other characters have been kind of infrequent and uh, minor, so I don't really have too much to say about them. I guess the next one I could say something about is uh, Joe's mom. And she's just like, yeah, kind of a, a tough business owner who 
clearly loves the shit out of her daughter, but is also, you know, strict on how she treats her. Honestly, she, she feels more like Papa G should be more towards what she is. Um, maybe not as strict and everything, but more in that realm, you know? Um, she clearly wants Joe to, you know, follow in her footsteps and everything, uh, take over the diner and all, which is not a bad idea, but it's clear Joe doesn't want to, and that's, that's probably her mom's biggest downside, is that she just doesn't listen to Joe enough, and doesn't, like, uh, really know what Joe values and what she wants out of life. So... Yeah, all the characters so far are good. It's just to varying degrees. If I had to say my favorite, it would be Joe. Uh, it, it, she's just exactly my kind of character who I just really gravitate towards in a, a lot of these shows. Um, a second favorite, though, outside of her would probably just be uh, Kid. He's just so well handled and written as a Kid character. Um, I also didn't count, uh, I can't remember his name, the alien guy, Tom Kenny alien guy. I didn't count him yet because he's not really a member of the group. Um, he, he's still an antagonist at the moment. He'll probably become a member of the group, but for now he's still an antagonist. Um, and he's not really done much outside of be a, outside of being a snarky asshole which is fitting for his character and all but i i'm kind of waiting to see more of him before i can really get a good feel for what they're going with at the moment um that all being said though i am very much enjoying this series and i'm excited to see where it goes next so let's get into it and hope for the best when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in three two, one, now. When I first started watching this show, like, I thought this is like, oh, this is this fun little uh, Craig McCracken style show. Definitely has the hallmarks of Craig's work uh, on previous shows like Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home. You definitely get that kind of feeling, uh, but with a more serialized approach to it. Uh, good character designs, fun little stories, little action sequences. Uh, but that's about it. Um, and now... I, I can say, like, this is so much more. I, I've said this, I think, about a couple of other episodes by this point, but... I, I'm saying it again here. This is the best episode yet. It's... It's a real good sign if I can keep saying that. If I get to keep saying that about more and more episodes that come up, that it just keeps impressing me to this degree, that's a very good sign. This episode, without question, impressed the shit out of me. It's probably one of the best uh, reveal episodes that I've seen in most things, I would say. Um, and, and what I mean here is like, you know, there, there's all these episodes where it's like, oh, it's revealing that the characters have powers or that the characters have been doing something or whatnot. Um, and, and everyone's just kind of finding out about it uh, for the first time. It, it's like, those are usually good episodes, but this, I would say, is one of the better ones. This is, like, up there... I, I genuinely believe this is up there with both Amphibia and Owl Houses. Owl House obviously had the season two... The season two mid-season finale. Um, 
with Luce's mom uh, finding out about everything and the the big revelations that happened with that. And Amphibia had the season three premiere doing the same thing with uh, the Boon Choys finding out about everything that Anne had been going. Well, not everything right away, but, you know. Um... If you wanted to count when the Boon Choys actually found out about everything, that was would still be up there, too. Um, but I, I would put this up there with the likes of those kinds of episodes um, for a, a reveal episode. Because um, this was phenomenal. Um, we knew that they had to find out some point, and only halfway through the season is kind of surprising. But it was done in such a brilliant way. I like how they're all freaked the fuck out at first. Not only by the demon death dogs of doom, but also by the fact that, you know, Kid starts flying, Joe starts portaling, Rosa has a ring and powers too, but, you know, her parents take that before she can show it off at first. And then, of course, freaking out about... Tuna Sandwich having powers, Papa G having the clones. I like that they're freaking out, that they're genuinely scared. Because it feels natural. It's like, oh yeah, you see a random child that you've known for all his life just start flying? It's like, yeah, you're going to be freaked out. These giant demon death dogs start invading the diner and start attacking? Yeah, that's going to freak you out. Um, it, it, it was really well done. Really well done. Um, also I like how this was like just a, like a, a, a diner invasion, a diner attack story. Like, we've seen those kind of things in various other movies or shows or whatnot, and it's like, I, I like that they did that here. That's, that's, that's fun. That, that's a fun little, uh, trope to bring in for this episode. Um, we see how they're scared, but eventually they start fighting back as well, especially Flo, in order to help, in, because they want to protect these kids that they've known, th again, all this time, and so they help out. And you see, they eventually grow used to it, and are supportive and caring and show that they're really excited about it even because they see that the that they can all handle themselves they see them fight these demon dogs even rosa again this four-year-old girl turning giant and, and actually utilizing her 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 growth powers in a very clever way for a four-year-old it's like knowing to shrink down at the right time so the demon dogs basically go pop when they hit the dirt and, and like grabbing the, the, the branch and then growing up so that the branch becomes giant too. It's like Rosa is getting clever with that. That's really fun. Like Papa G and Joe using their powers in clever ways. Like, yeah, sure, I expect that. Um, But I really like how Rosa is too. It's just, I just love it, you know? It's just really fun. Um, I like the sheer numbers of how many of these, uh, dogs there were, too. There were just so fucking many, which kind of implies that whoever is sending them is noticing that they're being defeated and sent this massive wave of them all at once, specifically to try and deal with the problem. So, there is... This very heavily implies there is an active force sending them. That the de that the demon dogs are not just acting on their own will. Um, which I feel was pretty obvious anyways. They didn't seem like they were like these willful creatures or anything. They, they seemed like, like attack dogs. So it makes sense that this would seemingly be the case. Um... And yeah, Kid wasn't really useful because, as they put it themselves, he's not really improving yet. Um, he's going to, for sure. 
but he hasn't yet. And at the end, Chuck uh, finally reveals the truth to him. Um, Papa G was initially going to, but decided to hold it back for kids' sake. But Chuck doesn't give a shit. So he just reveals the truth and the way it goes out, the, the tone and everything of the lighting of the music, it's almost it almost feels like it's implying that kid's gonna go bad. At least for an episode. I, I don't I don't think mo really more than that, but it, for an episode he's gonna go bad, probably um maybe even run away. Uh, and then when the others try to find and, and stop him, he'll probably attack them, maybe. Um, but he'll come to his senses, maybe, like, through a common enemy and everything that comes into play. Something like that is going to happen, I feel. Um, it, it seems like it's building up to that. He's not going to trust Papa G and them anymore for, again, for, like, an episode. Um, and honestly, I think that's the right move to make here, uh... I, I don't I don't think Papa G and them were in the wrong for faking the robot attack necessarily because they were just trying to help him. Um, but given kids' personality and everything, I, I feel like for writing that they have to do this, that it's the right thing to do. They have to have an episode where kid just can't take it anymore. I think that's just a smart writing choice here. So, yeah. Whether he actually becomes bad or not is, like, questionable. But even if he just runs away and tries to avoid them, like, that works, too. We have to have this kind of episode where he's feeling betrayed and useless and whatnot. Um, because it's going to make his rise even better. It's going to make him actually learning to use his powers mean more. Because he's going to be able to feel that low. And it's going to help him understand what he needs to go higher. To be stronger, to be better. You definitely need to understand what it means to be at the bottom before you can go to the top. It's... It, it's just... So, speaking kind of from experience, too, it's, it's not just like a power thing or anything, but even in terms of, like, how you live your life, like, it's easier and more rewarding to to improve and and become like a lot better of a person after you've experienced what it is to be at the bottom to be in a very bad place in various ways again speaking from experience i've felt these kind of emotions that kid is going to be feeling here I've felt betrayed, and I, I've also been in uh, in places where I've done bad things and said bad things. And going through that is part of my journey. And I was able to turn myself around, and it's rewarding because of it. I feel rewarded that I was able to understand that I was in the wrong. I'm not saying that I that it's a good thing that I was in the wrong, no. <laughs> but it helps me understand how bad that kind of mindset is and how much I needed to change and how much other people are in the wrong as well. Being there, I can understand where other people are, why they are there, and why they're wrong for being there. And so it, ge it gives me a different perspective that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And yeah, I'm going to use that as a positive. 
I'm going to view that as I'm taking something positive from a negative point in my life. I'm using it in a way that it wasn't used back then for the sake of good this time. And I think that's the best thing I could do with that situation. Kid is going to be going through a big lull here. He is going to really feel a lot of pain. But he's going to come out of it understanding what he needs to do to change and to become better. And he's going to be the hero that he wants to be. We know he is. We know by the end of this season, he's going to truly become Kid Cosmic. It's, it's great build-up. It's great setup. It's character work. This is the kind of shit I want to see so many shows do. And I'm, I'm really happy this one is. So yeah, I, I really hope that this series continues to impress me as much as it has been, if not even more. And I really hope that the second half of this season really sticks the landing and gives us some awesome, awesome moments. So... Tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of Kid Cosmic. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.